This video is brought to you by my two books, Practical Music Theory for the Rock Guitarist and the Blues Guitar Bible. Want to learn about modes, harmony, scales, chord substitution and keys? Or maybe you're interested in supercharging your blues guitar rhythm and lead chops. Whatever you're interested in, I guarantee you will be hitting the fast lane to progress with either of these works. Both feature video demonstrations and tutorials, loads of tabs and jam tracks to play along with, and I promise you, everything is explained in crystal clear plain English. Check out the links in the description for more details. Hello chaps, welcome once again to John Robson Guitar Tuition. As always, I do hope you're well. We're taking a little bit of a closer look at this guitar today. If you're watching on Thursday, you may have seen me unboxing this. It's my new PRS. Uh, the PRS SE CE24. And I'll tell you the whole story behind this guitar. I'll tell you what I think of it. And I'll give you some weights and measures and facts and figures for it right after we've heard what it sounds like in a mix. <laughs> And just to save a bit of time with me kind of running you through the settings uh, that I was using there, you could see them on screen. I think I'm going to start doing that uh, way of doing things a little bit more these days because it just kind of allows me to get on with the, the video without kind of doing all that housekeeping stuff. One bit of housekeeping I do want to do, though, is to tell you that there is a full tab for that piece of music in both Guitar Pro and PDF formats, along with a clip of me playing it and a jam track to play along with yourself. All of that is up on my Patreon page. There's the address and the link is in the description, $3 or £3 a month and you get access to all of these additional goodies that go along with these YouTube videos. And of course, a massive, massive thank you to everyone who supports me in that or any of the other ways, all of which are downstairs in the description. So, um, what's the story about this guitar then? Well, you may know, if you're a regular viewer of this channel, that I had a PRS SE CE24. The CE designation, by the way, on any PRS guitar tells you that it's a bolt-on neck guitar. The version that um, I had, still have actually, it's back there in that box um, waiting to be picked up by a courier. Um, but the old, the old PRS that I had was the uh, standard satin version of this guitar, which doesn't have the kind of nice maple veneer finish. And um, I was never really happy with the sort of rather 
ugly, I thought, chemical green kind of colour. The PRS call it turquoise, but to me it just looked... Um, well, it, I used to do a bit of watercolour painting many, many years ago. Just I wanted a hobby that wasn't guitar related for some reason. And there was one shade of green that you could buy in watercolour paint called Hooker's Green that on its own looks absolutely hideous and ugly and like a chemical spill, basically. But you mix it with other colours and you can get lots of kind of usable greens. And that the the, um, the colour of that PRS just reminded me of that Hooker's Green colour. But there you go, I digress. I was never really happy with the colour of it. I bought, that, bought it in that colour because it was the only one that was available and I was really gassing to uh, tr to check out that particular PRS. Um, then the other night I was on um, on the laptop downstairs and happened to stumble across the Gear for Music website and they had these guitars, the model up essentially, on for the same price as the um, as the the old one, the green one, the uh, the satin version without the maple top. Um, and I looked at the trade in price that, that, that they would give me for the um, for mine, the, the the satin version, the green one, and did some mental calculations, reckoned up what that guitar had uh, earned me in terms of YouTube revenue, because that's you know a figure I tend to include on the balance sheet for doing this sort of thing. And essentially, this guitar is kind of a free upgrade. It's it's near enough uh, a break even to to kind of call it that. And I, I mean, I do like the looks of it a lot more. I'll tell him some more thoughts about the guitar and everything, and we'll have a listen to some more tones. Uh, but first of all, let's take a little bit of a look at some weights and measures for the guitar. Uh, you can see weight of 3.59 kilos, nut width 43.1 millimeters. Let's just call it 43 millimeters. This is the, um, I think the wide thin neck profile that PRS do. And, uh, since my hand injury, um, I, I find just that little bit extra width is a bit more accommodating. Um, you can see first and 12th fret neck profiles there, 10 inch fretboard radius, and there's the DC pickup resistance readings, uh, both in humbucker mode with the tone control push pull, uh, pressed down and then in white with the, uh, with the control, uh, kind of pulled up. Um, so yeah, very kind of vintagey, um, you know, kind of old school set of pickup readings. You know, nothing, um, nothing too hot or, um, you know, kind of leery in in a modern sense, and that very much uh, sort of suits me. Um, I'll put a link to the full description, uh, full um, spec in the description uh, of the video. But um, let's just take a listen to some some more tones. Starting off with everybody's favourite, the uh, the bridge humbucker tone uh, in through a nice kind of crunchy Marshall sounding amp. I am of course talking about the blue guitar amp one on the uh, vintage channel. We get this kind of tone. <laughs> I don't know if it's coming across um, in the recording, but certainly in the room you can you can sort of hear that Fender kind of snappiness that that you get with a ball on neck guitar. Um, it's you get the feeling you could be playing some kind of high end Fender uh, with a with humbuckers in it. Obviously, it's got that sort of Fendery kind of quality to the tone. As I said, I don't know if that's coming across in the uh, recording. If I pull the um, the tone control out and back the guitar's volume off. We're basically in a clean territory. So to be able to go from a clean tone to a full on kind of uh, raucous rock rhythm tone just by doing a couple of adjustments here. That for me is invaluable. That's the way I like a guitar to be. It makes the guitar feel responsive. Um, you can use a foot switch to go between clean and dirty sounds. A lot of people do do that, but I like to, that for me, that makes it, it's like a one or a zero. It's a binary thing. I can kind of dial in the amount of, um, of grit or cleanliness that I want. Uh, let's go to the middle pickup setting. Uh, this time we'll uh, switch the amp over to a clean sound. Uh, this is the clean channel on the blue guitar amp one. And uh, with the guitar's volume full on, we get something that sounds like this uh, again on the middle pickup setting. <laughs> So 
So it's still got a little bit of fur around the edges, but we can tame that just by turning the guitar's volume down. And there you go. It gets even better when you uh, pull the tone control up and go into single coil mode. In a blindfold test, you probably think you were listening to a Strat there. Um, I've, I've spoken at length about how, you know, I'm not really a fan these days of Strats and uh, that kind of quacky out the phase tone that they are noted for. Um, and I've done a couple of videos with different Strat style guitars where, is this the guitar that will get me back into Strats? Wouldn't it be ironic if uh, the guitar that gets me back into that kind of Strat, the char characteristic Stratty sort of sound is a, is a PRS? Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, point I'm making is I quite like that, uh, that sound there. Going to the neck pickup in single coil mode, this is what we get. It's got more, to my ears, more of a strap middle pickup kind of sound because of like the 24 fret neck, um, you know, pushing the neck pickup back a little bit. That's just an inherent thing with all 24 fret neck guitars. And you either don't mind or you do. Personally, I don't. Um, let's hear the neck pickup uh, in humbucker mode with, uh, again, a clean sound. And then let's go back to the crunchy channel on the amp and um, we'll keep the guitar's volume backed off a little and see what kind of clean sound that gives us. I think that that's my preferred way of getting a clean sound, just crunchy sound on the amp, back the guitar's volumes. To my ears, that just has a little bit more warmth to it. Um, let's open the taps a little bit and go for the um, a little bit more of a gainy sound. Uh, neck pickup um, and the uh, the high again sound that I use, which is the, uh, the classic channel, boosted version of the classic channel on the blue guitar. Uh, what sort of sound does that give us? She sings, doesn't she? Um, you know, I've got to tell you that the tones available from this guitar are absolutely first class. Comparing it to the old guitar, the uh, the, S, the SE CE24 standard satin, the green one, we'll call it from now on, because it's just easier to kind of uh, call it that, isn't it? Um, I, I think that this just feels and plays just that little bit better. Um... I did do in Thursday's video a brief comparison between the, the, the sounds of those two, of this guitar and the green one. Um, and there wasn't a lot in it, to be honest with you. And there wasn't a lot in, uh, the difference in sound when I did a comparison between that green guitar and the, um, the USA version of the guitar that I borrowed off a mate of mine. You can see that's, uh, that's the video back there. I'll put a link in the description to that in case you're interested in seeing it. But yeah, um, you can see which is, they're both green in that one, aren't they? But you know, the, the more expensive looking green one, the shinier one was, uh, loaned to me by a mate and, um, that's the made in the USA version. And as I said at the time, both guitars felt similar, but the, the one phrase that I kept coming back to about the, um, about the cheap one, the the standard satin, the my green one, um, is the the phrase I kept coming back to when I did the review of that was built down to a price. Lovely guitar, played beautifully and everything, but it felt built down to a price. This doesn't really. This feels very much like my memory of that expensive one. 
uh, the USA built one. It feels like everything has had just that extra five minutes spent on finishing it. The fret ends, the fretboard edges, on on the, the green guitar as we'll com- continue to call it, the fretboard edges were just like just a, a right angle basically or like squared off. These aren't, I wouldn't call them rolled, but they are just a little bit more of a softer kind of fall away as, as, you, as you're holding the guitar and it's, it makes just that little bit of difference. Um, as I say, it just feels just that li- the, the back of the neck feels just a little bit silkier and smoother. Um, and bear in mind that I've been playing that guitar for a while, so it's had sort of oils from my skin and everything kind of making contact with it straight out of the box. This one just feels that little bit more loved. Um, so, you know, I am, um, you know, I am kind of very pleased with this. I mean, it's, as I said earlier, it, it amounts to a free upgrade in terms of what I would get. If you're in the market for a, a, a kind of an affordable PRS, and if Gear for Music have still got these on for four nine nine, then the only reason I would think that you would buy this one, that you would buy the the, stat, the satin one rather than this one, is that you just don't like the look of, of something like this. Um, I've said in the past that I'm not a massive fan of the PRS racing pigeons, the bird inlays, and you know, truth be told, I'm still not. I am learning to live with them, though even though it might it might take a while to learn to love them. I would prefer. Um, the old option that PRS used to do with the moon in is or just dots, but I've said that enough times now. You don't need to hear me say it again. Um, you know, it's a great workhorse guitar, uh, feels well put together. Um, let's take just a quick look as I'm finishing up the video at some B roll that I shot earlier so you can see some close up footage of it. Um, I'm really enjoying playing the guitar. It's, um, Partially because it's the new guitar novelty factor, it, that, that new guitar is always the one that you uh, seem to want to pick up. Um, but some guitars you want to pick it up, and it, it feels a bit of a mm, yeah. Ten minutes is enough playing it. This is you know I've been using this in my lessons the last couple of days, and um, you know people have uh, been oh what's that? Haven't seen that on the channel. No, well you will in a few weeks when this video goes out. Uh, but yeah, it, it is becoming something that I am uh, picking up on a regular basis. And then some d- some days I'll fancy a change and pick up the Les Paul or the Jet Telecaster or the Nashville Telecaster behind me. Um, you know, I'm uh, I'm not a monogamous creature when it comes to guitars. And um, well, f- why would you be when you when um, you know the the a few here to choose from. Anyway, I can tell I'm waffling. Those are my thoughts and uh, opinions on the Paul Reed Smith SE CE24. Make of them what you will. Hope you've enjoyed the video, folks. And if that's the case, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already done so. And why not drop me a like while you're at it? Don't forget the live stream every Friday, 5 p.m. UK time. You know what happens there? We drink beer. That's the main activity. And we talk about stuff, music, guitars, whatever. It's a great way to kick off the weekend. And I'd love to see you there if you can make it. But for now, I'll bid you all a good day and say thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. Look after yourselves, folks. Stay well, stay safe, and above all, stay sane. Bye for now. (laughs) 